Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks very much for taking the time to join our webinar today. My name is Mark Adams. I'm a product pre-sales specialist for Hype Vision. And also with me is Michael Dye, the product manager for our panoramic cameras. If you have any questions as I go through the presentation, please type them into the chat and Michael will answer them as we go along. Today, I'm gonna to give you an introduction to our panoramic camera products. First, we'll have a look at the Panaview cameras, which all will use multiple lenses. And then we'll have a look at the fisheye cameras as well. After the main presentation, I'll give a short live demonstration of the fisheye de-warping options and demonstrate how to set up the people counting, heat mapping and intersection analysis features of the fisheye cameras. So we'll go through the benefits of the different Panaview product ranges. So you can see the differences between them and their key features. And then we'll have a look at the individual products and then the product solutions to give you an idea of which MBR is best suited to each type of Panaview. The idea of the Panaviews is that they're designed to give you coverage of a much larger area than a traditional camera. And they can often be used where multiple cameras would have been needed in the past. And some of them also have a PTZ attached, which means you can get an overview from the main camera and then use the PTZ to zoom in and see more details when you need to. Okay, so as I said, we have different kinds of panoramic cameras and they're designed to solve different problems. Here's the traditional way to monitor a large area. You have multiple cameras pointing in different directions. They might all be installed on one pole, but you need cabling for all of them, you need to power them all, and it's going to take time and money to install each of those separate cameras. And most VMS software has a cost per license, and you'll need one license for every single camera that you have. So one type of our Panaview range combines multiple lenses all into one unit. The lenses can be individually adjusted and they're verifocal. So you can get the same coverage you would have done with multiple cameras, but you only have one unit to install. This saves time and money, and it only uses one IP address. So on most VMS systems, it's only going to use one camera license. There is still another potential drawback to using multiple cameras or even multiple lenses in one camera. You'll be getting four totally separate views, and there's nothing to directly link them to each other. This makes it difficult to keep track of where people are as they move out of coverage of one camera to another. And it can also introduce blind spots where you have no coverage. Now you can try to fix this by manually adjusting the individual camera views at the back end to try and make them overlap. But you're going to end up with gaps in your coverage, distorted images because the cameras aren't all mounted at the same angle, and just unnatural looking images that can be quite hard to use. To solve this, we have another type of pan view, which have multiple fixed lenses all covering slightly different overlapping parts of the scene. We then use image stitching to take the views from the multiple lenses and combine them into one wide panoramic view that looks like it was taken with one incredibly wide angle lens. Because our image stitching is done in the camera, you end up with a wide clear view of the scene with hardly any visible edges where the images are joined together. You also get consistent brightness and white balance throughout the whole scene making it look even more true to life. And the picture here gives you a great indication just how much detail and clarity you can get in a very large area. Now let's have a look at the different types of Panaview. First, we have the small Panaviews, which are designed for indoor ceiling mounted use. They all have at least two lenses to give you much more flexible coverage than a normal camera. These are fixed lenses, and in some cases, they also have a PTZ attached. The medium Panaviews can be used indoors or outdoors, but they have independently adjustable verifocal lenses. And one of them also has a PTZ attached. The main lenses on this one are fixed formal lenses rather than verifocal. And then the large Panaviews are typically used to cover extremely wide outdoor areas. These use the image stitching that I was talking about before. And again, some versions have a PTZ. Now let's have a look at the features you get in the different types of Panaview starting with the small ones. This one is one fixed lens, giving a nice wide 120 degree field of view, but it also has a PTZ, so you can zoom in for closer details. You can see the fixed camera on the right, giving a general overview of the cafe, and the PTZ is zoomed in, giving a clear view of the counter area. When the couple move to their table, the camera operator chooses to highlight the area where they're sitting, and the PTZ moves to zoom in on this area. You'll see this now. OK, 
Here's a similar option, but this one has three fixed lenses to give you a full 360 degree coverage. And again, it has a PTZ for when you need the extra level of detail. In this clip, you can see the operator selecting the different lenses. The PTZ is zoomed in on the area of most interest. And then we have the other three fixed lenses giving an overview of the entire shop. This PTZ has a four time zoom, so it's intended for indoor use. And the PTZ can rotate up to 350 degrees. It doesn't support endless panning like you have on the larger PTZs. And here's the sort of places where you'd use these panopies. As you can see here, they're ideal for an office, a shop, or perhaps a classroom. You can have it in the center of the ceiling, covering the entire room. And with that PTZ, you can obviously zoom in so you can see the full details of anything that's happening. We also have a small panel view which has dual lenses. The two lenses can be individually adjusted to point in two completely different directions. So this is absolutely ideal, for example, where you're trying to cover a large corridor. You can put one of these cameras in the middle and cover both directions from the one camera instead of needing one at each end. You could also use this in a corner. Let's say you have a corridor that turns 90 degrees at the end. Instead of needing separate cameras to cover the different directions, you only need to install one of these. Another example you can see here is using it in a car park, where normally to cover cars moving in both these directions, you'd need two separate cameras. Okay, and now onto the medium panels. These have multiple lenses, which are very focal and independently adjustable. So now we can cover multiple different directions in the scene, but because they're independently adjustable, we can pick exactly what angle we're going to see from each. You might have one that needs to be higher up, seeing a wider view, and another that needs to be zoomed in more closely to a certain area of the scene, and so on. You've got the flexibility to treat it almost as if you had four separate cameras in the same location. Here's an example of where you might use it outside. We can use just one camera in the middle of the car park to give us a view of everything we need to see. As well as the car park, these are also used at intersections, recording traffic traveling in all directions, and indoors too. For example, in a large hotel lobby where you can cover people as they enter and leave the hotel, as well as, as well as when they approach the reception area or head to the lifts. We also have the medium pan of view with the built-in PTZ. The three fixed lenses are giving an overview of the entire scene. When the operator selects an area of interest on any of those fixed lenses, the PTZ will automatically move and zoom into the chosen area. And now onto the larger panel views. These give us the stitched images. You can see here the top of the range 32 megapixel version. And if you look, you can see just how much detail we can get if we choose to zoom in. It's a massive wide area, but we can zoom in to get an immense amount of detail. The large panel views also have some smart analysis features. Here's one example of that, human density analysis. We can set up to three areas in the scene where we want to keep track of the number of people in the area at any given time. We can also have three different levels. For example, if we want to know more than 10 in the area, 20 or more than 50. This could be used for crowd control or just where you want to understand how busy a certain area is. And again, some examples of where these cameras are being used. Once again, across roads, but now we have full coverage of the scene in one view. Similarly with the public square, if someone is moving through the entire scene and we want to be able to follow them from one side to the other, it's all in one view. We don't have to worry about switching between multiple different cameras to try and find out where they've gone. And then here we have the large panel views again with the stitched image, but now with a PTZ as well. So you can see just how much detail you can get. Again, this is 32 megapixel, giving us a phenomenal image, but now we also have that PTZ included. So we can zoom in to see far more detail when we need to. Because these panel views use our latest VCA version two, you can set up smart functions in the panoramic view, which will then trigger the attached PTZ. Here's an example of that, auto tracking. We've got 360 degree coverage from the stitch lenses, which means we get two 180 degree panoramic views. And in this example, the camera is tracking vehicles. It could also be tracking people if we wanted. In the panoramic view, you can see the white car is being tracked. And because the PTZ is linked, that's also following the car and obviously giving us much more detail. It will keep following the camera for as long as it's in range. 
and that PCZ sports up to 40 time zones. Another really great feature is 3D positioning. You can see the full panoramic scene is giving an overview of the entire area, but if we simply click anywhere within the scene, the PTZ will automatically zoom in on the area of interest and focus correctly for us too. We can also draw a box around an area that we're interested in, and the PTZ zooms in to the precise area we choose. So again, here's some examples of where these get used. The crossroads comes up again because again we've got a very wide view and we can see exactly what's going on across the entire scene but now with the addition of the ptz we can get the close-up details as well okay let's have a look at some of the individual products and some of their features here are the small indoor products these are all designed to be ceiling mounted the first one has three two megapixel lenses around that black ring at the top giving you a full 360 degree coverage and then a two megapixel PTZ underneath. The second one is essentially the same thing but without the PTZ so of course it's even more cost effective if you don't need the extra detail provided by the PTZ. The last one is designed to go in the corner of a room. It has one lens on top with a 120 degree field of view and then the PTZ again to zoom in for more details. And then we have the dual lens camera. There's a couple of versions of this. You can have it with two five megapixel lenses or two eight megapixel lenses. And as I said earlier, the two lenses are independently adjustable. Okay, now let's look at the medium pan of views. This one has four separate verifocal lenses, which could all be adjusted completely separately. And it can cover a full 360 degrees or give you coverage in four separate directions. One might be pointed down and zoomed in close. Another could be covering a larger area at a different angle. There's a few different versions of this one. The first two, where the part codes end FWD, have a choice of two megapixel or five megapixel lenses. These are most commonly going to be used outside because they have 2.8 to 12 mil verifocal lenses. The other two, with G1 instead of FWD, are five megapixel, but they're slightly smaller. These are more likely to be used indoors because the varifocal lens is 2.8 to 8 millimeter, so a slightly shorter range. And the one with RC at the end is designed to be recessed into a ceiling. So if you're looking for something more discreet, this is the perfect choice. And keep in mind, this one doesn't have any infrared, but all the others do. This is the one with the PTZ. So now we have three lenses on top, giving us a 270 degree field of view. And then underneath again, we have the PTZ. As I mentioned earlier, the three lenses on top are fixed, four mil ones. And then we have the large pan of views with the stitched images. These are the ones without PTZ. So here we've got four lenses, either two, four or eight megapixels each. So the eight megapixel one, for example, gives us 32 megapixel in total. And that's the image we saw earlier. You saw just how much detail that provided. And then the versions with PTZ as well. With these, how many lenses you have around the top will dictate what panoramic view you're going to get. So we have four lenses on the first, and that's going to give you 180 degree panoramic view. That's four two megapixel lenses, so eight megapixel in total. The next one is similar, but it's four lots of four megapixel, giving 16 megapixel stitched image in total. And then we have a 270 degree field of view from the next one. So that's using six four megapixel lenses. And then finally, the top of the range, we have two 180 degree stitched images and 32 megapixel in total. And of course, with all of these, you also have that PTZ underneath, which is four megapixel on all of them. And all the features we looked at before, auto tracking, 3D positioning, and so on. Okay, so that's the products. Let's take a quick look at which MVRs you'd use them with. Pretty straightforward. With the small panel views, just a K-series MVR is gonna be absolutely fine. If you're using the medium ones, we'd recommend the I-Series. And if you're going for the large pan of views, then you need the I-Series MVR or the Super I-Series. Now with older firmware, the I-Series only supported a maximum of 12 megapixel resolution per channel. And some of these cameras need either 16 or 32 megapixel. So you need to make sure you're running the latest firmware. And then the I-Series will support recording up to four of these super high resolution cameras at the time. But bear in mind that the standard i series will only support playback from one at a time. Okay, 
That's everything on the panel views. Now we'll take a look at fish eyes. We'll have a look at the benefits of fish eyes compared to standard cameras, some of the key features, a look at the individual products, and then again, which MBRs they're compatible with, and then we'll have that live demo. Let's take a look at the problems that fisheye cameras can help you solve. One of the most obvious is where you need to cover a scene from multiple angles, but it's difficult or even impossible to install multiple cameras. With a fisheye lens, you have just one sensor, but it's ultra wide and gives you a 360 degree field of view, just like you can see in the picture. So as you can see, we're able to see and record everything in this large scene, all with the one camera. This is obviously easier and less expensive than installing multiple cameras. The other issue with using standard fixed cameras is that they may not cover the entire area. So you have blind spots in your coverage, meaning some parts of an area are unmonitored and therefore unprotected. Now look at what you can get from our fisheye. This is mounted to the ceiling in the middle of a shop. We have the fisheye view giving us 360 degree coverage of the entire area, but we can also display de-warped images that look like they're coming from a PTZ. And you can pan, tilt and zoom with these, just like with a real PTZ. And because the fisheye covers such a large area, we can also use it to gain some extra benefits which wouldn't be practical with fixed cameras. We use deep learning to provide heat mapping and intersection analysis, which can be really useful in retail environments especially. So as well as the security benefits, the shop owner or manager can get useful information about where people go in their shop and how long they stay there. I'll cover this in a bit more detail soon. Now, although the native fisheye view is great for covering the entire scene, it's also quite hard to interpret what you're looking at. That's why we offer multiple different viewing modes so you can see everything in the scene in the most useful or appropriate way. This video shows a few of the options and I'll cover them in a bit more detail in the live demo. So this one with a half circle shows you two views, 180 degrees of the scene. Next, that full circle, which gives a panoramic view showing the full 360 degrees. Excuse me. Let's start that again. And you're seeing here, we can also zoom in for more detail if need to. And of course, we have multiple PTZ modes as well. All these where you see the full circle with a number of squares will give you a panoramic 360 degree view with a number uh, of virtual PTZs as well. And then PTZ fusion mode will give you four virtual PTZs, but they'll all show on one channel on the MBR. This is perfect where you can't store multiple cameras but want multiple views. And obviously if you're using a VMS, this is a license per channel, so you're only using one license here. Now in the 12 megapixel fisheye, we've changed over to a really high quality lens from a company called Imavision. This has an even wider field of view, so you've got more of the scene being covered. There's also less distortion. As you can see here, the image on the left is almost a perfect circle compared to the oval on the right. This also means when you de-warp the image into a PTZ view or zoom into an area, you're going to see more detail in the scene. Now, of course, we have IR built into the cameras. So they can be used in low light conditions. As you probably know, depending on where the camera is installed, you can get IR reflection bouncing back from a wall, for example. You can fix this by reducing the intensity of the IR light, but with a fisheye, you'd also be reducing the intensity across the whole scene. So now some areas will be too dark because the IR light isn't reaching. So we have three separate IR lights and you can adjust them independently of each other. This means you can fix the IR reflection coming from a wall, for example, but keep the IR intensity high in the rest of the scene where it's needed. And finally, for the features, here's a couple of the business intelligence functions. Heat mapping is very often used in retail. It enables the business owner to keep track of how busy different areas of a shop are. Essentially, we count how many people visit each part of the store over a given period of time. And as you can see here, we use different colors to help understand the information at a glance. The areas in red have the most footfall, this can be really useful if the business owner has a product they want to promote. They can make sure they put it in an area where customers are definitely going to see it. You can also see the information based on dwell time. When is the shop busiest or quietest? This can obviously help a store owner with decisions about proper staffing levels or different times and days of the week. 
Now, heat mapping isn't new, but we use deep learning technology to vastly improve the accuracy of the data. Older cameras just used motion detection to identify that something was in a particular part of the scene, but there was no intelligence about what it was. So, for example, a shopping trolley might be counted as a person or even changes in light levels. We're detecting the presence of an actual person and then counting them. So the results are far more accurate and obviously far more useful to the business owner. Now, intersection analysis, sometimes called pathway analysis, is a bit harder to visualise, but it can actually be very useful. It allows the business owner to gain an understanding of which directions people enter an area from and which direction they then leave the area by. A simple example would be when people enter the main entrance, what percentage then go left or right. And like with heat mapping, this information can be used to help decide where to place key products in the shop. I'll show this in the live demo in a couple of minutes, which will make this clearer. Okay, here's the different options for the fisheye cameras. We have a six megapixel and a 12 megapixel option. But remember only the 12 megapixel has the inner vision lens, which gives you the wider field of view and even clearer images. Both options are also available to externally rated IP67 and IK10 Vandal rated. That's the version with dash V in the part code. The cameras have two built-in microphones and a speaker, as well as audio input and output connections. Now the fisheye can be used standalone. All the features we've looked at will work fully. If you want to use it with an MVR, then you need to use an I-series because the K-series can't be walk the fisheye view into the other modes. You can also use IVMS 4200 or Hype Central. Okay, now finally, I'm going to show you a short live demo. I'll show a few of the deep warping options and explain the difference between hardware and software deep warping, and then give an overview of how to configure the heat mapping and intersection analysis. Okay, so we're going to log into the camera now. So this is obviously just a demo setup, just in a, a relatively unused storeroom. If we go into the application, in fact, actually I'll start with the fish ID warping and the live view. So first of all, over on the left-hand side, you'll see that we've got software and hardware de-warping options. In the software mode, the fisheye itself is actually producing this image that you can see right now. And when we pick a display mode underneath, it's the software that is actually changing the display. The fisheye is still outputting this image in reality. If we go into hardware mode, then the fisheye itself is creating the relevant display. So in software mode here, the first thing we have is the mount type. So we're telling the camera, where is it mounted? On a ceiling, on a wall, or on a desk? You'll notice if I change where we have it mounted, that our display mode options actually change slightly. And if you're going to use the heat mapping functions, you need to make sure you have it ceiling mounted and have it selected as such on here. So we're seeing the fisheye mode. We can also see the display here with the 280 degree fields of view, which we can simply scroll around. We have the fully stretched out panoramic view that's actually showing the full 360 degrees. And then here we have the option with the PTZ. So we've got one PTZ here, and you can see underneath in the red shape is showing what the PTZ is actually looking at. And we can also drag the other way around and move it from there, and it will affect the PTZ above. We have the same thing here with three PTZs, six PTZs, and even nine PTZs. And then over here, we also have four PTZ option. So we can just adjust these independently of each other, just as if we had four completely separate cameras. If we go over to the hardware mode, you'll see we have slightly less options. 
I won't change between these because it needs the camera to reboot. But we have an option here, which is the PTZ Fusion, and that will give us all four images split as if they're four separate PTZs, but sent to the MVR as if it was just one channel. That does mean you can't adjust the PTZ, so they're just fixed at whatever they set at in the camera. Okay. So let's have a look now at what we see with the heat mapping reports. There won't be much data in here, but we can choose whether we want a daily, weekly, monthly, or annual report, and whether we want to see either by the heat mapping or by the dwell time. So we'll pick the heat mapping, and up comes our result. As I mentioned, this is a room that isn't used very much, but you can see the heat map in the middle right of the display, showing you where someone has actually been spending time. We can also show this as a heat, ma heat map of time this way. I'll have annual again. Obviously, there's not been much happening, but it just shows you the number of people over different time scales. Okay, so something similar for intersection analysis. What we can pick here is which direction in are we interested in? And then we'll have, again, we'll say an annual report. And now what it's showing is for everybody who entered in through direction A, what percentage of them left through directions A, B, C, or D? Now there's only four directions here, but you can actually have up to 10, obviously in a, a larger environment if that's useful. Okay, so let's have a look, look at the configuration for how we'd set this up. One other thing just to mention here, if we didn't have the camera set as being mounted on the ceiling, the options that we need right now would be missing from the bottom here. So if you're trying to set one of these up and you can't find them, that's the reason why. So going to people counting first of all, and you can see we've already got something set up here. So what we are essentially doing is setting up the area where we want to count people. So if I clear there, we're saying we're interested in counting people in this area. And then we'll draw a line, which we need to resize to fit within that area. And we can then change the direction, which counts as in. So what would happen here, we have the red box, which is the count area. People need to enter into the red box. Then they need to cross over the yellow line in the direction of the arrow. And then they need to leave the red box. And that's when they'll be counted. We have the army schedule just as normal and the linkage method just noted by the surveillance center. Nice and straightforward. Then we have heat mapping. Fairly similar. But what we're doing now is we can draw the area where we're interested in mapping or probably more useful in most cases, we can say select all and it will give us the entire view of the camera. Now we can choose what we're interested in, whether we want dwell time and heat mapping or just dwell time. And we can pick what reports we're interested in having emailed to us daily, weekly, monthly and annually. And that's the same report that we saw over on the previous section. And then we have exactly the same options for arming schedule and linkage method. And then lastly, intersection analysis. So in here, we clear these areas. What we're now doing is simply drawing the area. This can be a multiple sided shape, anything up to 10. And what we get is the arrows here marked with A, B, C, D and so on. And what we're going to do is we will be tracking when people enter through any one of these specific directions and which way they therefore leave afterwards. And that's what we'll see in those same reports. Here we have the daily weekly, monthly, and annual report. And with all of these, obviously, you need to click save and make sure it's enabled up the top. And then that's it, you're all set. You'll be able to see this information in Hike Central as well. You need the business intelligence reporting function to be able to do that. Okay, that's everything 
that's the complete demo. I'm going to hand 